Hello and welcome to Vivid Resources webinar series, Vivid Voices, and its newly created MicroTalk series. I'm Laura Hunter, owner of Vivid Resources, and today we're pleased to welcome to our first MicroTalk, Karen Kranick and Scott McDonald, co-founders of Modern Accelerator. They're a digital innovation accelerator for global brand leaders who are seeking to seize opportunities in a rapidly changing digital landscape. Welcome guys, welcome to you both, and thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Today we're gonna to talk about the pace of technology and its impact on design. You guys ready? Definitely. Awesome. So, you know, Modern Accelerator, uh, in, in some of the language around telling people who you are and what you do, you talk about the acceleration of everything. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? From our perspective, it's about design as a cycle and that everything in our culture is speeding up, right? Technology is changing very, very quickly. How people interact with technology is changing very quickly. And what customers expect from technology is ever escalating. So, you know, if I can, you know, you know, dial up on my phone Uber Eats and have some meal delivered to me, then I'm also going to expect that other industries will be just as easy for me to access at any place or at any time. So if I'm, you know, renting a bicycle on the street, why shouldn't I be able to suddenly on demand order uh, liability insurance for that hour that I'm going to have that bicycle, right? So, I mean, customers are really hungry for and thinking about a consistency of experiences across their entire lives at every like digital and real world touch point. So, when we're talking about that a kind of um, fast paced transformation and acceleration, um, that's where the changes are coming into the design world as well. Because companies um, and consumers now have to, companies have to understand that customers want what they want when they want it, um, and that we have to come up with new design techniques and tools to accommodate that kind of rapid change. So how do you design for that? So this is where sort of Modern Accelerator comes in, and this is where other companies who are interested in things like agile uh, development frameworks, uh, lean user experience methodology, uh, you know, lean startup methodology, uh, anything about sort of uh, test and learn functionality and test and learn methodology is where the future is heading. So it's basically putting the customer front and center, making sort of prototypes, making uh, quick sort of touches with the marketplace and seeing how people react to that and then adjusting the designs, adjusting the technology to fit what customers actually need. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about acceleration. Fascinating, and that makes complete sense, um, especially considering you know how everything is now so integrated. Any kind of aspect of uh, what we're doing in our day to day lives, we expect instant results and, and the ability to serve our needs immediately. So that makes complete sense. Um, you know, you you'd said that recently there were two developments that have become game changers and have kind of shifted the power to design teams. So I'm curious, what are those developments and how is that playing out in what you're seeing for the future of design? Well, the, the first one, uh, Karen just covered exceptionally well, and that's the acceleration of everything, right? That's something that we're living with every day in our personal lives and at work. The, the second one is, is sort of a product of those accelerations, and it's also a response to them at the same time. And that's the, the rise of on-demand customer insight. You know, you know most of us in, in, in the design and UX communities would, would agree that you know, the more we know about our customers, the better and more impactful our work is. But historically, we've, we've had obstacles to getting that customer insight to make our work better. You know, it's too slow, it's too expensive. Uh, you know, that's no longer the case. And that's, that's a really important development in our field. You know, we now have the tools and the techniques that allow us to condense research that used to take, you know, weeks or months down to a few days. You know, to give you one example, uh, there are new, new platforms like Alpha and some of our viewers may, may be using that platform in their work that allow us to prototype new ideas, recruit test subjects, and then run a variety of experiments all from a single platform within a matter of days instead of weeks and months um, with no technical skills required. And that, you know, that speaks to a lot of designers. This is really important. You know, this is, um, this is a real game changer. Um, and it means 
there are no more excuses anymore when it comes to going out into the marketplace and getting the, the user insight that we need to be successful. And this is what we mean by power shifting to design teams. But because you know, a well-equipped design team today using the latest techniques is in all likelihood going to know customers better than anyone else in the organization. And there's a lot of power there. Um, and that means that we're less subject to the whims uh, of opinion and subjectivity than we've ever been before, um, or at least we should be. Excellent, yeah. So it sounds like that uh, really the focus on um, research as uh, you know, in, in the form of customer insight has become a, an ever more important tool um, for design. And so maybe we could talk a little bit more about the impact that that has on design itself, on the decisions around the design that you're making. Sure, uh, and really, you know, a core component of sort of lean startup and lean user experience design is this notion of build, measure, and learn. So it's this feedback loop, right, that we basically um, want to go after at all, you know, basically if products and services um, follow this methodology, then they're more apt and likely to p produce things that customers are actually going to want. Um, so, you know, I, you might see like, you know, websites that you interact with right now. I mean, this could, this can start from anything from like asking for instant feedback, instant ratings, you know, like Amazon will ask you to please, you know, rate this product, um, a product, like I guess Audible will ask you, you know, if, if you like this book, um, <laughs> you've listened to it. So there's sort of basic levels of research. And I would consider that sort of the more basic because that's sort of once a uh, product has already been developed. And we're also talking about, though, moving much further upstream and thinking about what customers need and testing with the marketplace even earlier and even more often um, than actually a finalized product. A lot of people have heard of minimum viable products, the MVP, that gets thrown around a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of um, misunderstanding about what that exactly means. A lot of people think that's just phase one of a project and it's still this sort of waterfall technique yeah. uh, where you sort of, you know, take months to build it. That's actually not the case. Yeah. Like we're suggesting in terms of acceleration that you actually uh, build smaller prototypes to start or even, even go back even further up the stream and ask customers, you know, more about what they want and what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, there's this new sort of trend of low code, no code, uh, which means of development tools, which are basically not necessarily actual development tools, but it allows uh, people who are designers without, say, developers' experience yeah. to put together more basic prototypes. And then, like Scott was talking about, there are other tools out there like Alpha HQ, which would let you, say, put up a prototype, have it tested with customers, you get feedback within three days, like comprehensive feedback from literally, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of customers, and you have a much better sense of what you actually should be developing and how to pivot when needed. Excellent, wow, that's, that's really interesting. That's actually new to me. And as a recruiter who talks with people all day long about what's happening in design, because I specialize in design, that's fascinating to know the, the no code, low code. I'd be interested to see how that kind of evolves. Um, gosh, you guys, it sounds like you're really doing amazing work and especially leaning in to where design is going. You know, I, I'm, as we're getting ready to close out our micro talk, um, you know, I'm just wondering where you see modern user experience and design teams as well as the future of design. Where do, what does that look like from where you stand? Yeah, we, we see a, a, you know, four traits that, that we think characterize the, the modern design team, four big changes. First and foremost, and this is the biggest one by far, customers are included. You know, if before you, you were in the habit of asking for permission or asking for resources and budget in order to include customers in the design process, that's no longer the case. You know, a modern, well-equipped design team um, has the tools and resources to go out and find the answers they need to be successful. It's that simple. If it sounds like we're encouraging our colleagues to uh, ask for, for, beg for forgiveness rather than ask for permission, we absolutely are, of course. Um, you know, for them, customer contact is, is, is as integral to the design process as firing up the design software or creating a set of wireframes. It's just hygiene. Um, and that's, that's, that's really important. Um, the second thing is, uh, and this is related, is design teams are no longer bringing just ideas to the table. They're bringing ideas and evidence to support those ideas and those recommendations. And that and changes the conversation entirely, right? That, that chases the subjectivity right out of the room. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's, uh, that's very important in terms of uh, credibility uh, and success and shortened timelines for projects. Uh, you know, no, no need for subjectivity anymore. Third one uh, is teams are streamlined in every way. So the, the, the day of the 100, point, 100 page PowerPoint deck, you know, that's, that's got to be over, right? The days maybe over making our case uh, with the re research findings, things like that. It's like, we don't need that bullet points, prototypes over PowerPoint, you know, streamlined everything, smaller teams, insights over process, over, you know, rigorous process. Um, this is really important because all these things allow us to move with more agility. It just, we're taking a lot of these sort of the ceremony, I guess, that we've, that we've gotten accustomed to over the years and getting rid of a lot of that. So we can just focus on the things that really are going to move the needle. And then uh, finally, and this is something we're seeing as an emerging best practice, is they're operating outside of their organization's day-to-day -day operations. Um, you know, with things moving as quickly as they are in the marketplace today, you, know, we, we, you can't afford to move at the cadence that your organization is moving at operationally, right? That's just too slow. You can't wait three weeks for the next meeting, right? You've got to go out and you've got to keep going. Um, mm -hmm. So you're seeing this in a lot of organizations now. It's got a lot of names. It's called the two-track system. It's called the two-speed system. It's called the dual operating system. You may have heard some of those terms. I think you're going to hear them uh, more and more as time goes by because it's just become a necessity for doing business today. Fascinating. Actually, those are new terms to me. Um, and so I, I think uh, it's, it's, this is what I love about having these kind of conversations with people like yourself who are leaning so far in. Uh, because you're now, for our new designers who are going to be watching this, they're now kind of, if they haven't already been, they're clued in to where things are going and they can step into that a little more quickly, a little sooner. So thank you both. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk with me today at this first uh, Vivid Voices Micro Talk. And I'd like to thank the viewers for watching. Um, you can learn more about, Mike, uh, about Modern Accelerator at www.modernaccelerator.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel for all the most recent updates on the Vivid Voices webinars and micro talk series from Vivid Resources with thought leaders like our friends, Karen and Scott. Thank you again, you guys. I really appreciate your time. And until next time, I'm Laura Hunter. Be well.